Yo, how's it going? This is Will Fox, and I'm going to be talking about the character select theme from Melty Blood. I'm going to be breaking down how to play it on piano. So if you're trying to learn it, how to play it on piano, you might be struggling or you want to know how I think about it or you just want to hear like a nerdy music theory analysis. This is exactly what this video is going to be about. Um, you can follow along or even look at uh, my sheet music, which I provide for my patrons and, and and whatnot. And I also have uh, some Desi uh, videos of me playing various Melty Blood covers on piano. So you can copy that um, note for note. But I think it's even better to like analyze a song a little bit. And when you're playing it, it, it makes it a little bit easier to just flow and play it. That's how I know how to play everything that's on my channel and make all these covers and whatnot. So yeah, I'm going to be talking to a little bit about music theory. I'm going to have timestamps in the description. So you can uh, skip to whatever section or whatever concept you want me to talk about. And in general, um, my philosophy is if you know where if you know where chords or notes come from, then you'll you should never get lost. It's it, it's just a matter of just knowing where you're borrowing um, all of these ideas and notes from. Um. Something always comes from somewhere, you know? So just knowing where that is, it might not be obvious. It might be kind of tricky. And my whole purpose of this video is to show you where everything comes from. And this way, if you're struggling with a certain idea or struggling to remember how to play it without like looking at the sheet music or something, then just knowing where these things come from could help your fundamentals overall. And playing this song, it's going to be a breeze. This is a bit of a tricky song. I don't think execution wise is that tricky um, as long as you like are comfortable playing your scales and stuff like that. It's not the trickiest thing. The tricky thing about it is it borrows so many chords from so many different places. But um, yeah, without further ado, I'm going to just get into it. The first thing I want to talk about with any song is the key that we're in. Uh, knowing what key you're in um, helps just narrow down what options you have. So we're in G minor. And we're also going to be using like a G melodic minor. Like that's just G melodic minor. And I'll talk about that a little bit more in depth in a, in a moment. The other concept I want to talk about is a T5. So if you ever heard of the concept of 2 5, 2 5 1, it's thrown around a lot in jazz theory. I sincerely think that. If you study jazz, there's a bajillion concepts to know. I don't know everything. I don't think anyone knows everything, but the bread and butter, the the straight up B and B is two five. You can and the the reason why two five is so common and so important is because um let's say that I touch like uh that note, right? Like um Doesn't that note sound weird? Well, 2-5 can set up what notes all of a sudden sound correct. Um, for example, this is going to happen later on the, in the uh, song. Oops. All of a sudden, E-flat now sounds like the tonic and now sounds like the key center. So the concept of 2-5 uh, is used quite a few times in this song, and it's a concept that if you're comfortable with, you can play a lot of stuff, and you can just play almost anything just by knowing that concept alone. So um, I can break that down a little bit more once it comes up. And another thing, the other scale that we're going to be using is like... Uh, um, like the blues scale, like, um, um, it's kind of like the G minor pentatonic. So very similar to, to G minor, but you're leaving out the two and six. Um, and... See how we're like using all this? I'm so fluid in it because I'm just really used to it. So just knowing that, hey, 
we're going to be calling on that skill um, in some moments is going to make it a lot easier. There's also a run at the very end that's like... I could talk about how that's really easy for me to just like know how to do outside of like doing all my skills and stuff, but knowing which notes are like, uh, how do I say, like the correct notes to do that on, very simple. But uh, okay, so that's like the extended version of the intro. So I'm gonna talk about the beginning of the song. So um, by the way, there's gonna be a lot of uh, chord names on the screen. Don't get overwhelmed by that. I'm gonna be talking about what chords are out there. The beginning of this song is goes like this. So what's going on right here? Um, so we're in G G minor, and I I personally like playing the chord in my right hand like that, like just playing like this. Um, I'm playing the extension of the G minor, uh, G minor nine, if you will. I'm... The melody is on top, so it sounds good still. You even go like that if you want to be, but that's not that comfortable to me. So... Just very simple. And then now we immediately have this run. So what the hell is that? Well, that's G melodic minor. So uh, G minor being. Um... G minor scale, right? Uh, G melodic minor kind of borrows, any melodic minor borrows from its major scale. So like G major. G melodic minor is like, see how these two notes are, are the same? Um, rather, a better way to look at it is, um, what's the difference between the G minor scale and the G major scale? Well, Your three and your uh, six and seven, four, five, six, seven, are what are like flattened in your G minor, if that makes sense. And um, G melodic minor is very similar, except your third is still the minor third. And your six and seven, they just come from G major. We're literally one note different from G major. And then um, this run in particular, it's just doing it from the, from this position, from the fifth. This chord is really weird. And I don't, I'm not gonna lie to you. I don't know why A flat sounds good here. I guess it's like whole tone. I don't know. I don't know. That's me going a bit too far in theory. I don't. I don't know. It just. It just works. And again, I like playing the chord in my right hand, like this G flat augmented here, over A flat. The bass just went up, literally by one note. That's basically all we're doing. And actually, I didn't even know about this chord until recently. Um, I guessed, and I used this this chord in my original sheet music um, and in my original Synthesia video. I just used that because it functioned well, but I didn't really, my ear wasn't developed enough to like hear this. Like, this is so weird. Um, anyways, so to continue with the melody, um, so, and then I like doing this with the bass. And the bass actually does that in the original song. Just, um... Just the same exact pattern, just up, you know? And then uh, we're going to this A minor. I don't know what the software is saying, but this is A minor, um... A minor 7. But I'm just... This is the melody note on top, so I'm kind of just using these last few notes of A minor 7 and A just the root overall I'm playing the root in the left hand of every chord that I'm doing anyways <laughs> I bumped the key um, so what's going on here this is just a 2-5 to G minor um, and instead of like a 
two five uh, instead of A diminished or half diminished, it's A minor. If you listen closely, back to G minor. This is just going up. You could take the exact same voicing. But sometimes I do like that. I don't know. That's just like a little like cool thing at the end of that uh, phrase. So this phrase is cool. It's mostly just all, uh, it's all in key, right? It's all in, just all G minor stuff. And then this is like um, a dominant five to the, to the one. Um, and there's a cool note here. This note isn't in key, but um, it doesn't really matter because it's targeting a note that isn't key. So you can do that in any with any note. If you target a note, it has that really cool classical sound. I'll, I'll, I'm not really thinking about this note. I'm thinking that, hey, I'm targeting this note and it just so happens to just be this note right underneath it chromatically uh, approaching a note. Um, real quick side note, uh, Landrachia is like, you know, it's just targeting D, you know, so. And then you play the same melody the same way, but you, um, um, That's the only difference. Um, so I'll put it all together. Okay. I like doing this with the left hand. Like it's approaching again, chromatically approaching the target note, G, your root. It also is in, you know, your five chord, your dominant five chord. So that's all that's going on right there. Okay, so I hope all that made sense. If, if there's anything else I could have clarified, uh, you know, just talk to me in the comments or on my Discord or whatever, and we can go from there. Okay, so that's the first part of the song. Uh, a lot of stuff going on. The second part of the song is a little bit more simple. It's kind of jazzy in a, in a small way, a little bluesy in a small way. Um, I'll, I'll just play it out real quick. Oops. So, remember when I mentioned um, the G pentatonic scale or G uh, blues scale? That's all that's going on. I like sliding these notes, like uh, doing like a grace note where you play like just really fast. Oops. That's all that's going on right there. So this melody is pretty uh, simple. It's just E minor, uh, just E minor, E minor seven, whatever you want. I guess this is, I don't really care about the extension. So it's really just this. So the second time you have, um, Oops. So just a little bit of a different ending. And then you're going to be using that G blue scale at the same time. Like you're just going, you're just going down like that. And you're actually two fiving. If you notice in the left hand, you're two fiving to E flat, like two five one. Um, that's very useful to know because uh, you do have an A flat all of a sudden because we're, that's in E flat. We're two, the second chord, and then five, one. So
Okay. And then the next part is... This part trips me up. That part is probably the weirdest part for me, personally. But um, you... The melody is basically chromatically approaching F sharp. So you're like, like right below it and then you like kind of like dip down and you go back up same chord percussion and you're just going up like this uh scale like harmonic minor i guess um but and the chord progression is just g f e like um g minor f Major, E diminished. So, I mean, that kind of comes from like, like E flat, but if you were to just raise this one, then these two notes stay consistent and it just makes a G, uh, excuse me, this just makes it E diminished. So it's like. I like just, you know, using this E diminished. That's all I'm doing. Just really emphasizing it here. The melody note is still the same, it, it's just there in this chord. So that's just like a personal personal uh, preference I have to that. And then the last part is just kind of... Uh, this line is cool because it's basically... G pentatonic started from here. But it does start off a little bit different. It's actually this note. I, I believe it's this note anyways. So that's easy to remember. So you just have C minor 7, D minor 7, as you. This is pretty simple. So as long as you're comfortable with the fingering, maybe. And I think there are double stops in this, but uh, I'm kind of bad at, at that type of concept. So that's something I got to work on, but uh, it still sounds good. And then here we have this long run that's like that's easy uh, to do if you get the fingering down I'm kind of like but what notes do I know to use well this is really uh, this comes from the D flat major uh, scale all this is just D flat major uh, the reason why I know this is because we're two fighting. Um, again, two five one two five one. So I see E flat minor seven. So I know that I know all this works. So it's just a matter of like building a muscle memory and getting that down. So after you have um, where was I? Um, oh. And down below, um, I'm, I'm using my damper pe pedal, but just to like sustain, that should be pretty obvious. But um, um, yeah, so this is just two five, so E flat to um, uh, A flat, A flat seven, down at seven. But you don't go, you don't go, you don't resolve it, if you will, to uh, D flat. You're just like borrowing it for a second, just like. And then you're back at the top of the song, like you're done. And and then you just go from there. And <laughs> I hope all that helped. I don't know if all those concepts quite helped. Uh, what I would do is if any of those things were a bit tricky, either ask me or just practice. If you practice in like, D flat, you know that really well. If you practice in, in G minor. And if you practice like G melodic. Oops, I messed up. Uh, if you know that pretty well, then you pretty much have it. It's just a matter of the left hand is not even that tricky. You can do a lot of different things with the left hand. Even with my sheet music, I kind of simplify the left hand because I'm just doing what I feel. I'm just making sure I represent the chords. I'm making sure I don't have like 
big, um, uh, like, even though this is, you know, D7, right? I don't like how it sounds. I'd rather would play, like, that's still D7. So it's just a matter of figuring out what sounds good to you. So I'm, I'm going to play the song so you can see my uh, fingering. I'm going to play the song all the way through so you can see my fingering and we can go from there. Yeah, I, I'm not really warmed up to like play the whole thing all the way through from start to finish. There's a lot of hesitation, but overall, that's how I would play it on piano. So I hope this helped you out. Any questions, just feel free to ask. I have sheet music for my patrons, and I'm excited for the new melody. I'm actually working on a cover of this song, so that's why uh, I figured I'd take a second just to like, you know, explain how to play it. But yeah, thank you all, um, and I'll see you guys next time.